Hi guys, Elliot here. I hope you're doing really well. I thought I'd jump on a quick video today and just speak a little bit about some mistakes that I made on the recovery journey and you know what you can do to try and combat these mistakes and try and nitpick it, sorry, nitpick them and cut them out so you can move on towards a path of recovery. So let's get straight into it. So one of the main mistakes that I made was watching videos compulsively. So Obviously, I know on the OCD Recovery channel, there's loads of good content, lots of different things being covered. I'm on them as well, so they can't be too bad. But um, yeah, when I was super triggered or feeling like absolute crap or in a massive rumination cycle or just really struggling with OCD, I would spend a lot of time watching the videos. As soon as I got triggered, watch the video. As soon as I had uh, a thought or an obsession or I had a worry about being stuck, I just watch a video and I was constantly like going onto YouTube again, watching videos, going off, getting another trigger, going back onto YouTube, going back onto YouTube, seeing if I was doing it right, what I was doing wrong. And all of that was just completely fueling the cycle because essentially what that was saying to myself was I can't handle this, I can't handle the discomfort, I can't handle the the ruminations and the compulsions. It's completely unbearable. I need this to be gone right now. I need to know exactly what I'm doing right now is the right thing. I need to know this bit of information and insight right now, just so I know that I'm gonna be all right, just so I know that I'm gonna recover. And yeah, I was just signing in signing on to YouTube so many times throughout the day and just looking back, it was just very compulsive. It didn't give me a chance to wear the symptoms, it just gave the impression that I wanted it all gone now. So what I recommend um, for this is, yeah, watch the videos. Obviously, that's what they're there for. But a lot some time every day, not every day, but maybe once every other day, uh, once every few days, a lot some time to watching the videos and obviously disputing your irrational beliefs. So you might complete your day and then you might spend half an hour at the end of the day, uh, some for reading, might do 15 minutes of reading, uh, might do 10 minutes disputing, and then you might do... Um, five ten minutes of watching the videos right so yeah don't be compulsive with watching the videos be honest with yourself as well are you watching too many videos in one moment are you really still allergic to the discomfort and you just need to watch that video to double check that you're doing it right okay so just be honest with yourself yeah don't do it i i spent so much time just watching hours and hours of videos just go about your day and yet, like I said, save some time for it at the end of the day. So the second thing I was doing wrong was thinking that my life should be free of discomfort, right? I had these strongly held beliefs, right, that my life should be utter bliss, that my life should be completely perfect, have nothing going wrong in it. And looking back, you know, why should my life be like that? Would, would, would a life like that really be like so good if you never felt any discomfort or challenges or pain like would your life really have that much meaning would it really be that worthwhile you know i don't think it would so it's unavoidable even people without ocd right they're gonna have a lot of um they're gonna have discomfort in their lives right they're gonna be sacked their family members are gonna like one day pass away they're gonna be rejected they're gonna have things go wrong so just because we have OCD, why do we think we're above feeling discomfort? I know it's so hard and I know it's so tough and, you know, um, difficult feeling OCD symptoms, sensations, urges, compulsions, all that stuff. But, you know, to think that we're above feeling discomfort is irrational because there's nowhere it says that we absolutely shouldn't. There's no one out there living a completely perfect life, um, constantly happy, all these things. So, you know you need to really break down why you should be the person that shouldn't feel discomfort, why you are so special, why are you that person to not feel it, right? And once you do that, um, you know, you, you're able to look at discomfort a lot more rationally as well and actually improve your frustration tolerance. So the third point is disputing in my head and trying to accept things throughout my day. So I remember I'd be sat there maybe at my desk at work and I'd just be disputing my OCD in my head. So I'd be saying things like, it would be absolutely awful if I never recovered. Um, being homosexual or gay would be so terrible. Obviously I, hated, I had HCD as my main theme. So yeah, I'd be sit there, sat there going throughout my day and just in my head trying to, to um, dispute in my head. And that was just completely fueling the cycle, right? I just wasn't letting the OCD breathe. I wasn't allowing it to be there. 
I just wanted it gone in that moment. I wasn't accepting it. Obviously, with accepting things as well, it's not a doing, it's a being. That accepting gradually comes. If you're trying to accept things in your head throughout the day, you've definitely not accepted it because it's just a natural state of being that comes from persisting and disputing your irrational beliefs gradually over time whilst reading the book. So, like I said with watching the videos, don't dispute it in your head. Save that till the end of the day. When you're spending, when you're not spending the whole day disputing and you only do it at the end of the day, your body actually, your brain actually is able to take these beliefs on like in a more efficient way. Because if you're saying the same thing around around your head in, in the day, then it's just, it's not going to have much meaning. The belief isn't really going to sink in because it's not, it's not significant because you're thinking it all day. When you get to the end of the day, occasional disputing and beliefs, your brain thinks, ah, right, this is something that, um, something that has like, you know, validity. It's not something that I'm just sort of, got on repeating my brain all day it's something that i'll be able to you know really understand because less is more at the end of the day um so it's a bit of a weird, weird way of putting it but um hopefully you know what i'm trying to say um so the fourth point is aiming to be rid of ocd thoughts images and sensations and urges and not trying to live alongside them right you got to get out of your head that you need these these um sensations and whatever to be gone that is not the goal the goal here is to live alongside them right if you're thinking to be rid then that's just a dead end road because obviously ocd um knows what you're scared of and obviously with with ocd as well it's like a paradox the more you fear something the more it's going to come back the more you try and be rid the opposite is just going to happen right so the aim is to really just to coexist with it i know that's so tough and so difficult to hear um but it's it's like the well it's one of the only way only way it's one of the only ways out um, in terms of OCD you need to just live alongside it you're not going to be in any real physical danger um, you're still able to you know hopefully function um, still have your basic necessities in life so you know you don't need these um, thoughts images sensations and urges to be gone right if you um, read it last of life by Paul David and self help your nerves by Claire Weeks um, they both um, refer to sort of living alongside um, anxiety sensations and I'd strongly recommend reading those two books because they really just help you to allow their discomfort to be there and really help you get in the mind frame of yeah you know what my life probably going to be like this for the time being and that's okay I prefer it to not be like this but if it is, it is, and I'm just going to live alongside it. And once you have that mindset, it's really, really beneficial to your OCD recovery. And then the last mistake that I made was worrying if I was doing uh, the recovery wrong. So I'd, I'd sit there all day, I remember, um, and I'd just think, ah, oh, have I done this exposure? Do I need to do this exposure? Have I disputed this belief? Um, have I done this compulsion? Am I doing too many compulsions? And it's just going on and on and on and on and on. And what that is basically is just the fear of not recovering, right? So yes um I'd, I'd prefer to recover and it, it'd have lots of benefits to recovering from ocd but even if you even if i didn't recover even if you never recovered from ocd then that still wouldn't be an absolute travesty you could still function um you know walk talk all of those things so you don't really need to worry about if you're doing recovery wrong because even if you didn't that's still not the end of the world and also as well, like, you know, look at what you've got in front of you, right? You've got this amazing, like, recovery channel that's been created by Rob and the team. And, you know, if you take those steps and, like, take their advice, then, you know, there's a really, really strong chance that you are going to recover. I'm not saying that you absolutely are going to recover. Of course, there's no 100% guarantees, um, just like with anything in life. But, you know, if you take the right steps um, and you break it down and you keep going bit by bit by bit, then you will recover. So you know there's, there'd be less of a need to worry about it if you actually give yourself the best chance of doing it so yeah with that said guys i uh, hope you enjoyed the video and yeah i will see you again soon cheers